then on the AP, I want to just take a little bit of time and if you could explain like the difference between the anatomical access versus the mechanical access in the part that plays in um, in our, I guess, total pre-op planning for our total knees. And I assume we're probably talking about the a, a mechanical, like restoring mechanical um, access. I guess maybe we can actually touch on that because that's also confusing. Uh, if we're trying to restore mechanical axis versus doing it in an anatomic knee. Yeah, so, you know, I think this is where it actually gets into the nitty gritty of the procedure and what you're going to do in the operating room. And I think the important thing to realize, especially if you're in training, is that you're going to work with 10, 20 different surgeons and they're all going to do something different. The most important thing is just realizing, one, to know all these different techniques because not everyone's right, not everyone's wrong. There's, a, there's 10 different ways to do a total knee. Um, but understanding the basics and why that person is doing that procedure that way, I think is kind of at the core of this. And, and breaking down knee replacement into kind of its most basic components, figuring out what goals we're trying to achieve and then how we're going to achieve them best. So in, as far as talking about alignment, I think the simplest way to think about it is Mechanical axis is a line that's drawn from the center of your femoral head to the center of your ankle. That is the mechanical weight bearing axis of the limb. And that is what you are trying to restore with a knee replacement. So Perfect. going into going in a, even a little bit more deeper to that, how do we how do we restore that mechanical axis? What are the different techniques to do that? So talk, when we talk about anatomic axis, what anatomic axis is, is a line drawn down the shaft of the femur or a line down, drawn down the shaft of the tibia. This is not the same as the mechanical axis. You do not bear weight in the same direction as a line down the center of your femur. So if you draw that line down the center of the femur, that's your anatomic axis. If you draw a line from the knee up to the center of the femoral head, that's your mechanical axis. And those are usually about five to seven degrees if they have a hip and we just we just lost you we just lost you in and out I, we heard you say those are typically about and then and then you kind of went out you mind repeating um repeating the difference yeah, no between problem. yes sir yeah so the anatomic axis is aligned down the uh the center of the femur and the uh, mechanical axis is a line from the center of the head to the center of the knee. The difference between these two lines, the angle that they make, that's usually about five to seven degrees. So that angle is what we're trying to recreate when we make a distal femoral cut. So there's multiple ways to do this. You can stick a shaft down the, fe down the femur. You drill a hole, you stick a shaft down the femur. That shaft is reproducing the anatomic axis. And then our cutting guide, you can actually set the five, six, seven degrees, which that is basically trying to recreate the cut to the mechanical axis. Now there's other ways to do that because not everyone's center of the femoral head is in the same location. Someone may have it at five degrees, someone may have it at seven degrees. This is where things like GPS or navigation or robotics can come into play where it actually, you move the leg in a circle and it actually finds the center of the hip for you. And then it dials in what that mechanical axis is. On average, we're normally cutting the, the distal femur at about five degrees to kind of off the anatomic axis to kind of line up with the center of the femoral head. Um, so taking that even, even a little further, so the tibia is a little bit easier. The anatomic axis of the tibia is actually straight down the tibia. And that also matches the mechanical axis of the tibia. So they're the same, it's straight down the tibia to the center of the, ac uh, center of the ankle. So the goal in recreating the mechanical for the axis for the tibia is just cutting a perpendicular, uh, cutting perpendicular to the anatomic, which is also the mechanical axis of the tibia. So it's a 90 degrees um, angle. Now, this isn't always true in every case. If the tibia has a little bit of a bow of it, uh, bow in it, we still know that from the center of the knee to the center of the ankle is the the um, mechanical axis. So that's why we use extra medullary alignment um, where our, our guide goes around the ankle and goes um, uh, up to the proximal surface of the tibia and we can uh, line it up uh, 90 degrees that way. 
Um, so there's a couple important things about the cut. Um, you don't want to, for example, a study shows that if you put the tibia in more than three degrees of varus, it has a higher chance of failure and a poor patient outcome down the line. So you want to be as close to zero as you can. Um, if you have to err on a side, uh, you can err on the side of varus. It also depends on the total alignment of the knee. But I think the basic concepts are cut the distal femur at about five degrees to the anatomic axis, cut the um, proximal tibia 90 degrees to the anatomic axis. And that should give you a basically a basic uh, good setup for having a good outcome for me. I think, I think that was a great explanation. And uh, just to summarize, so we're trying to restore the mechanical axis of the knee. And so intraoperatively use an intramedullary guide, which typically goes right down the anatomical axis of the femur. And then using that, you adjust your jig and you make a cut uh, in about five degrees of valgus, which will help restore the mechanical axis. And that's for the femur side versus for the tibia side, the mechanical axis and the anatomical axis is in line uh, right down the shaft. So you make a cut at 90 degrees. Um, the question I had is we always hear the, or see these numbers like 87 degrees and 81 degrees on the, uh, you know, the distal femur angle or, you know, what, where, where do all these numbers come from? How do they come up with that? Cause those are always pump, pop up on pictures. And I remember I was confused. I was like, I thought we were making five or six degrees of valgus. So how, how like, where do those numbers come from? Can you explain that? Yeah, so if you look at that num, uh, so the uh, for the distal femur uh, where it measures the lateral distal femoral angle at 87 degrees, which is normal, the way that that number comes about, and a lot of this is uh, this is more important when you're doing deformity co uh, correction in the pediatric literature. It's not so important for the uh, joint replacement literature, but basically the uh, lateral distal femoral angle is at 87 degrees because the joint line is actually three degrees off from the mechanical axis. So it's actually, in total, the distal femur is actually nine degrees of valgus. And the, uh, the um, proximal tibia is actually in three degrees of varus. So if you cancel out the extra three degrees in the distal femur and cancel out the extra three degrees in the proximal tibia, if you just cut him, um, cut it at neutral. So you're just cutting to the mechanical axis. You actually cancel both those out. So that makes it a square rectangular gap for your cut. So it's just because the distal femur is in that extra three degrees in the, of valgus and the proximal tibia is in that extra three degrees of varus that these numbers come from.